Hello, it's Martin with Mercedes at IAA in Munich. I want to cover what's available on the stand because in the past years Mercedes EVs have been of zero interest to me. Mediocre specs, interior not to my taste, but Mercedes has been really cooking in the background, especially on the technology and drivetrain front. So let's take a look at what's available because they have basically refreshed their entire lineup, starting from the entry level all the way to the highest end of what they have to offer. Let's start with the entry level because while Mercedes had some higher end products which were good on paper, they just didn't sell that well, it was down to personal taste to a certain extent. Whereas the entry level cars felt like they were built by a completely different company and only as compliant electric cars with mediocre specs, very heavy, poorly packaged and extremely expensive. That's all changing now with the CLA and this will form the entry of Mercedes's electric lineup. No longer is the EQ naming. CLA you can get in a hybrid form or as a pure EV and that's what obviously we want to focus on here. Bigger batteries in combination with more efficient motors, power electronics mean that with the biggest pack this will do well over 400 miles of WLTP range. So even in real world conditions you can expect comfortably 350 miles which are impressive numbers. And it's not only about the technology. Mercedes has supposedly listened and has redesigned the styling to make the car a bit less blobby. I'm afraid aerodynamics is still a very key metric of achieving that range so they still have a very smooth surface but for example now from the side profile the nose is a little bit more aggressive. Some people are still not used to the blank face of EVs so it does have a fake grille. Very blink with a lot of illuminated stars but this is the look Mercedes has been going for for a while so I suppose it is what it is you either like it or you hate it. Of course we've got the light bar as well but the other big changes are on the inside. Despite being built on a shared platform with the combustion engine CLA, Mercedes says it was designed as an EV first and the combustion engine was squeezed into it rather than the other way around, which is usually the case. Normally I would just say they're just marketing stuff, but in this case I do believe them. If you go for the single motor version, you get a motor powering the rear axle, which is the correct way to do it. Of course, all wheel drive drive frames are available as well. And in the interior packaging, it's a lot better than the outgoing CLA. It's important to mention, it has grown in size. It is now very similar to the Tesla Model 3 or BMW 3 Series, for example, rather than an A-Class. But I actually have decent knee room. Unfortunately, just like with all of these saloons, there is not much under thigh support because I'm seated quite low to the ground. But speaking of the ground, at least I have a properly flat floor, just like you would expect in a bespoke EV. And I still have decent amount of headroom. To help with the headroom, the glass roof comes as standard. And that means that instead of having headlining, which is usually a couple of centimeters thick, this glass extends all the way above the rear passenger's heads. So you gain a little bit of clearance there, despite the sloping roof line. In the cockpit, Mercedes listened yet again. There was a lot of criticism of poor build quality with previous Mercedes products, especially on the entry level. While it's difficult to judge that from just sitting in a car for a few minutes, it seems a lot improved. For example, the tops of the door cards are nice and premium. There's still a little bit of hard plastic, but all the things you touch are covered in nice materials, like for example, Alcantara in this case. You may notice that there are only two window switches. This is only the case for the CLA to make enough space for the door handle in the optimal spot in the door card. The GLC EV, which we will touch on in just a second, with very similar architecture, does have proper four window switches. And on the inside, the software has been completely redone. And Mercedes has decided that they are continuing with this hyperscreen idea where they just want the entire dashboard to be one screen. It may not be, again, to everyone's taste, but actually in person it looks quite smart. The screen is very well positioned. On the entry-level cars like the CLA, it is not a single panel, so you, as standard, get a big center screen, an illuminated gloss black panel in front of the passenger. Optionally, you can have a passenger screen fitted, which is very similar to what you have in the center, 
and they can watch multimedia while they're driving or take over some of the vehicle functions. And you also have a small digital instrument panel. Optionally, I believe, you get a heads-up display on top of the dashboard as well, which projects the information right into your line of sight. But based on the size of it, it doesn't look like an augmented reality heads-up display. But to be fair, with this many screens, I don't think you need any more information. Likewise, the stalks feel of much nicer quality than before. There are still some touch haptic buttons on the steering wheel, but that is changing. I'm sitting in the CLA saloon. However, from, I believe, year 2025 and on the shooting break from the moment of the start of production, some of these will change to a rocker switch and a roller for the volume, but you will still have the touch capacitive buttons on the lower section of the spokes. Yeah, I think definitely nice progress from Mercedes here and I would definitely want to get behind of the wheel of one. Going up the range, if you're after something a bit bigger, you have got the GLC. Again, renamed from the EQC to GLC EV. And this is a hugely important vehicle for Mercedes. Number one, the petrol slash diesel GLC is their best selling car in the entire lineup. And it makes sense. It's a very universal, well-sized car for families and suitable for long distance, but also in town use. This debuts Mercedes's new design language, I would assume, especially for electric vehicles with even more imposing illuminated grills. Lots of black chrome, which in my opinion is a little bit outdated. You will see that BMW is moving away from chrome and replacing it with, for example, accent lighting in an effort to be a bit more sustainable as chrome is very difficult to manufacture. And on that point, the iX3 is this car's direct competitor. And while Mercedes is trying to score some extra points, focusing on comfort with features like air suspension, rear wheel steering and other extra gadgets. Overall, I think the iX3 is a much more complete package with better range, faster charging times and in my opinion, a more stylish design. And if you think the CLA had a lot of screens, this is on whole another level. Because on this demo example, we have got the higher specification hyper screen. That means the entire panel is not made up of multiple display units, but is a single massive continuous screen which expands from the passenger side all the way to the instrument cluster in front of the driver. And on top of that, there is a huge heads-up display as well. If none of that is enough for you, Mercedes also has the AMG GT XX concept on display here. And that feels like something out of a science fiction movie top charging speed of almost one megawatt, so approaching 1000 kilowatts. And while it is just a concept, it's more of a prototype because it previews what's coming next for the highest end of Mercedes's lineup. And in fact, this particular vehicle has already set a record of driving over three and a half thousand miles in a day. Take that, diesel drivers. What I find extremely exciting is that Mercedes has managed to turn things around, and especially the fact that they are offering such a complete package in terms of range, charging speed, and a step up in interior quality on the entry level. Even if the styling may not be to your taste, it's always welcome to see more competition in the market. And for me, I would definitely want to get my hands on the CLA. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you optimistic hey. as much as I am about the future of Mercedes? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more EV content, and I will see you in the next one.